pleasant Thursday morning to you. Welcome once again to Untangle on the Bridge 99 FM. A very special morning to you, Richie B, and the Up and Go crew. Good to have a quick chat with you this morning. And of course, we'll meet up and we'll chat and we'll, you know, keep each other posted, updated, the whole thing. You know how we do it. Eh? So, uh, Richie B and the Up and Go crew, you have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you very much for joining us on the Bridge 99 FM. And thank you very much for joining us on Untangle on the Bridge 99 FM. All right, so where are you, Lafayette? Where on earth are you? Hello? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I don't see you. Morning. Morning. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Now good morning shining glory morning mama how are you i am good how are you i am happy to be alive same way so yes and i'm happy that you're here yes nice beautiful and 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 you see everything else we take care itself that's, that's right. right that's right that's how we have to keep to so one step at a time one foot in front of the other same way so i tell you something you see if i know so we are going to do it we are going to trip you know? may i tell you um, drop like breadfruit too. <laughs> may I tell you? <laughs> may I tell you? And we can't, uh, especially like uh, for me, born name you know, no, so say he's a fix back. So I, I, I one step at a time, <laughs> me darling. Yeah, one step at a time. So what we going to talk about today now? About the great champs, but you see, Mama, Kevin, mm-hmm. come. Oh no, I'm in a jersey, but I don't know. It's what kind of jersey? But in the case, oh sorry, sorry, him give me a look there. Is what kind of jersey? Casey. Casey. Okay. So one of them. <laughs> yes. Bridge full of Casey man. And JC. And JC man. So it's yeah. J the colleges. The battle of the colleges. Yes, for real. And well, you are right there on the bridge. Yes. And me there, you know, in the middle as a referee so mean I'm my look a black and white. <laughs> <laughs> so no. So watch this now, Lafayette. Member say, right? We yeah. did a talk about off the air, we did a talk about school. Right. And chumps. And <laughs> you, you know where I'm going with this. You know? <laughs> Listen, me never, first of all, me never ever understand how massive this whole chumps thing was until I started working in Kingston, about like 2013, them time there. Okay. So me never even know, say, this. I mean, you probably would have heard about it and, you know, seen persons going and all of that. But I didn't understand, say, listen, them take it really serious here in, in, in <laughs> Kingston, in like, and St. Andrews. So it was when I came now, I realized, say, all right, is this big thing. But me never really have anything to contribute because my little school in Montego Bay, Harris Memorial High School, we're not well, even I got chat. No, well, no, 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 <laughs> No, no, no. Remember, ma, we can write it down. <laughs> Name again? Harrison Memorial <laughs> High School. <laughs> no, I know where you think I'm going to. Harrison Memorial High School. High School. Yes. And this is in St. James. Yes. St. James. We're, we're in St. James. It's, uh, oh, it's a private school. It's near to, actually, it's right, you'd say adjacent to the Corner Regional Hospital. Okay, so, so you got private school. Yeah, in a, in a, in a sound as glorious as it, it is not as glorious as it so. <laughs> Can I just say this? Let me tell you something. Me no say you figure no say yes. We got that. Well, I don't know. Harrison Memorial High School next to Cornwall Regional on a produce a wonderful student. <laughs> so right. a whole heap of school have name from now straight back till the morning and some of them produce rogues. Then I so at the top of the day it really is not about I laughed. Let me not play the hypocrite here. <laughs> most people when we tell them them don't have a clue no, I say which part? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I went through all of that. Yeah. Right? But and then me said to me said to Lafayette, say, Lafayette, me no have no more laughing here. Me need to do the rest I laugh pan the year. <laughs> so but you know, all me a trouble you. What a production. So tell us a little bit about that school. Right. So it's um it's a very old school. Actually this year we'll be celebrating seventy years, seventieth okay. anniversary. So yes, yeah, shameless plug. So persons who attended Harrison. We're celebrating our 70th year this year, so listen out for everything that's... 70th? 70th, 
that's yes. that's long. You know it long, so actually how I ended up at Harris, you know, mama. My mother she gets a job. She I guess me tell her business from the ear. But anyway, <laughs> we were living in Hanover and she got a job at this school. <laughs> so the school had a prep school, so it only goes without saying that since she gets a job at the high school, then me and my brother would have attended the prep school. So that is right. how. And then because she teaches at the high school, she was like, right. you can't be selling a product and encouraging persons to come to the school and you're not sending your students up. Even though my ball, I'm never want to go. I'm not want to go be high on them school. Which part did you know I forgot? Montego Bay High School. Of course, everybody yes. would want to go there. <laughs> so but she, you know. <laughs> she said, no matter where you pass, we go out there, so you're going. So I just yeah. say, all right, I'm not. Yes, yeah, so that's why I didn't Yeah, that's why I didn't know. Sensible mother. Because, you see, uh, you see, that again, you know, hey, love you, and I will eat things, you know, because you can't send your picnic. I, I remember back in the day, a friend of mine's uh, son mm -hmm. passed for a very well-known high school. Yeah. And the kind of high school that, it, back in the day, anyway, a pure rich people picnic up. Right. And, oh, he was so excited because his son passed for the school where the whole of the rich people, they picnic them go. Yeah. You see, when that time for extracurricular activity, you know, and them want to do, uh, I don't know, some, uh, me do right. know. Some sit with a little boy, I don't know. Not Taekwondo. <laughs> exactly. And then you have to pay X amount for it. And That's everybody right. else will fuck out the money. That's right. And then friend of mine now don't have them the money. That's that right. back out. I saw him problem. realize, yes, he better rethink this thing. Problem. Yeah, uh, yes, of course, that's a problem. So I know exactly which part your mother did. Yeah. Because she right there, you are there under her nose. Then that, may I tell mm, you? Boy, that, that is right. a whole other story for no, your mother. No, 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 <laughs> my mother. So me, uh, you're under my nose. So me, yeah. everything good after that. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying nothing. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and, I, and I don't regret it, you know, having gone there through the system. I mean, after I left in um, 11th grade, uh, I went to a public school for sixth form. But she said I'm never ready for okay. university at 16, so she sent me to um, Herbert Morrison High School. So, so, I represent so you were ready for university at 16 from this school? In my head. Oh, but not in her head. So I ended up at no, but at least you had qualified. Yes, yes. Me, no, my point is that you did well right. at the school. Hey, let me tell you something. You see, as someone who got through the whole of them something, yeah. and as that remember that like a story let me just tell you now a while ago. It have to do with how you apply yourself. Yes, you know, definitely. There were certain schools back in the day that were not traditional high schools, and nobody wanted to pass for them. Exactly. And now these are the schools that are doing well in sports. Definitely. And as a result of that, them confidence get boosted, mm -hmm. and them doing the people, this is the children that apply themselves. Exactly. Anywhere you're there, exactly. you will do well. That is it. That's what she hammered in my brain. She's like, listen, it doesn't matter where you go, but. It what you do there with the opportunity that you're given so absolutely yeah. and, that's and she so says she now send a picnic to school for five years and i come out with nothing so yeah good yeah. and that never happened yes <laughs> so it was a wise decision but uh, anyway back yes. to back, back to, to champs yeah. no no i know back to back to oh Harris memorial never in a champs <laughs> mama in a tv in a cha much <laughs> yes <laughs> The closest to come <laughs> a sports day. That was it. <laughs> School challenge quiz, none of them something there. So oh my God. you're just root for your team what you like in yeah, exactly. these kind of activities. But so you know, so which so. team you did a root for back in the day? Well, a more school challenge quiz. I think when I came to Kingston, I mm -hmm. watch how me I get in trouble now. Um, <laughs> watch how me I get in trouble now. You see, oh, Sean, get up now, you know, mama. <laughs> So when you get to get, no, no, just black out, Sean. All right. What? Yeah. I mean, it's hard for Blackie Boy to do, but do it. <laughs> do it. I lean to, I lean to, like, JC and them school, eh? right. <laughs> Because. I'm afraid, you're afraid of Sean. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of Sean, because, but myself, Vaughn, I'm a friend from a long time. True, so true, we are true. from JC. RJ at them time. Right, and then one right. of my good friend, Unique, her brother went to JC. So she I bring JC. So me, I bring JC. And mm -hmm. sometimes Calabar, because, you know, mm -hmm. you like little excitement. But KC, them, they on a whole nother level. So Kevin, I give me a bad eye. I was just like, they're the ones always winning. So me, I say, I'm not bring Kevin them. Kevin went to KC? Yes, he did. Bring him cross yourself. Bring Kevin, him Mama call you. See, Mama call you. Okay. Kevin, Mama call you. Him and mm -hmm. Shells, you want to mm -hmm. see them in a them jersey. Oh, Shells, a KC, man, Yes. Too. 
I know that um, Richie B is from Teachfield. Oh, mm-hmm. Lord of his mercy, I can't stand him already. <laughs> God, Kevin, make your fear go and send that people them place. I don't show have to ask support, who you bring in. Show the support for the for the winnings. If what? But show the support for the winning side, man. Oh, oh my goodness. Let me ask you something. The name of that um guy that have the African name that doing well in the hundred meter. What's his name again? Um, Abu Abu. African name. What's his name again? Him just break no, the record right, in a. Huh? Him <laughs> break the record in a. The, Heats a semi finals or something like that. Anyway, a good you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see I'm cheer for the team. I don't know if you know. He has a unique name. Yes, he has a unique I can't pronounce it either. That's why I asked you. But yeah, apparently he's doing very well. Oh, his and let me tell you the truth. His mother is Jamaican. Eh? His father is Kenyan and his mother is Jamaican. Oh, that's the guy. That's the guy. So he's doing well. So I know that Casey will get some points from him for sure. So, yeah, but I want to see him on the national stage. Yes, you want to see Jamaica, how he looks on the national stage? Yeah, that's. We, we want him to do him best in other school. Yes. Right. But I want to see him go further. The next you see in Bolt are probably even better. True, true. I agree because it looks like he has that potential. Boaji. Oh, Boaji and, and Kumi. Yeah. That's the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. I remember him from last year, too. Right, right. There was some controversy last year I'm about him being there. So, Mrs. Say, you're all, <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Say, you're all purple. I'm sure she, Sean is here in, in some kind of blue. Where is Sean? No, I'm not. I don't know blue. I'm going to call him out. Come, <laughs> yes, blue come, nine come Sean. Make, make the Jason man them say, oh, what? But yeah, but I, if it's even a case, you die. <laughs> Put on something. That's it. Let me Put keep it neutral. Something. Put on something there, Sean. I can talk about your school because let me tell you something in a buckle case. You go back and you know. Let <laughs> me take my friend. This is a, come, Sean. Talk about your school. Hi, Mama. Uh, hi, Sean. How are you? I, no, no, but I linger. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> me are fine. Tell me about JC in a Champs 2023. Why, um, they write us off, you know. Mm-mm. They still like, we don't have a chance this year, but. Mm-mm. Yeah? <clears throat> oh, that's why you're not coming on a blue. But that's when JC strives, when um, you write us off. So yeah. we normally do well when people are not looking for us, not expecting us. And oh, that's when I know what strive. you mean. You know, I know what you mean, because yeah. uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, you know. Exactly. True. Yes, it's kind of easier to come from behind for true. No, not from, yeah. I'm not, well, I mean. <laughs> Coming from, from the unseen, <laughs> the unseen point. Sean, sure, go back to, no, go back, go back, 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 go back where you come from. <laughs> you see, what we have to deal with on a daily basis, mama. I know, right? <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> I'm a caller. Yeah, Kevin, Ka- yeah, if you're listening, come fast, fast. Make we hear about your school. Let me tell you something. Enough, you have no name in a car. You see? You see? You see, Lafayette set the levels, you know. And she brandished for her school where, 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 where nobody don't know about, you know. So that means that nobody can shy if you come to talk about for them school. Exactly. All right. So, Sean, hear this now. Me that tell Lafayette this morning. Say back in the day. <laughs> Say back in the day. When we used to go to Woolmers, mm-hmm. back in the day, me never even know. I sure only never. Well, well, Lafayette, you're not going to know, but me never, me sure sh- Kevin Sean and, and Sean don't know, <laughs> say. You could have get three quarter pint. Mm-mm. Okay, so um, back in the day, <laughs> that could have gone. So, Woolmers girls back in the day, times have certainly changed, you know. Woolmers girls back in the day. Mm-hmm were not necessarily encouraged to participate in in in, kind in, of activities. in, 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 in athletics particularly. Mm-hmm. There was hockey, there was lawn tennis, there was table tennis, we were very mm-hmm. good at swimming, and that's where we were kind of channeled into. Right. But we were not channeled into athletics. athletics. Track and, and field. And, track and field. And anybody my age, like my friends my age who went to different high schools, tell the same story. Yeah. Because the kind of rigorous exercising that you... <laughs> 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 you didn't have to do. We always, I say we don't, I want, we care for turn cow. For turn <laughs> You know, you tick up on, on the kind of thing. Yeah. And times, thank the you most wanted high to look times have changed. Petite. You wanted to look very, you know, 
Yeah, kind of. We were, you know, let me tell you something, do you know? You see, you see media and socialization exactly. is something else, you know? Exactly. Because a lot of us who don't have that look, or a lot of people who are ladies who don't have that look, grow up very self-conscious, you know? Definitely. And Definitely. when we get big and we realize it, it's uno like that look. Exactly. But the virgin them were all our side here like our oh, look. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm exactly. So sometimes you just have to be yourself and that be yourself something that makes you attractive. Definitely. Definitely. See see Cavalli, your mama. See her here in her cabs come in. in her. Come in cabs. <laughs> no, distinguished in spectacle. In <laughs> come in cabs. Oh, she an next KC to me. I'll forget. Oh, Come. what is this? Come here, Cavell. <laughs> but you know something I'm going to tell you, love? I'm going to tell you. You say what? See I mean, now see your face, Cavs. I need to see her. Come, come up some more. Oh, oh, what is not this? <laughs> uh, oh, Cavs are trying to Come up and look further, Cavs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey. Let me tell you a little secret about calves. I don't know if you know this in all the You see all the mouth where calves have, that are until the mic turn on. Then that may I tell you? So, so, so which school you go with, Cavell? You can see all the way. I'm a KC mom. That's where my son graduated oh, from. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's understandable. That's so understandable. So you're okay. And let me tell you something. Nobody no passionate like the KC mom, them, you know? Yes. <laughs> Very so passionate. We're so going oh, to win. We don't have to JC, I look at time for now. Mm -mm. <laughs> when is it for now, you mean? From Thursday and Friday? If it's Friday and Saturday are over there. Friday and Saturday. <laughs> We hey. just like JC a look at time now. So which school you went to, Cavs? The great. Which school yeah. you went to? Talk the thing. <laughs> you know you're you know sister, nobody <laughs> never know a laugh yeah, one. No, no. <laughs> what, what she said, love you. The eyeglass so till love you. Where me eat it? <laughs> she not answer the question. Me not right. hear her. Which school, school you went? Oh, to? oh, oh, oh! You oh, me went to one of the. What am I first say no? My school don't know nothing about athletics, then running, right. nothing about sports. Okay. We went so, to then I'm at then I'm told me go. The only sports we know when we phone the station. <laughs> <laughs> I can't laugh. I can't laugh. I can't laugh. I can't get you. Get cover the headphone, no man. I know you're going somewhere. We need to speak. <laughs> Say. Yes, thank you very much. So, Cap, yeah, you hear me now, Caps? Yeah, me, I hear you. All right, so what you say? You go, you go, then I'm told, and then I'm told, never really enter champs. Then I'm told, no, no, not no about Gibbs, really, your champs, not no, we don't know about. Tongue sports, we know about. And when we team up together and beat the police, them. <laughs> You see, you see why, you see why Kavel just stop bad we up now. Exactly. You see why? Because, <laughs> because she well schooled in that. Let me say Kavel not stop bad we up now. So, all right. So, but let me tell you something. I know the I'm told high, just secondary at the time, but now it's high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of my schoolmates, Audrey Williams, is the principal of the school. She went to school with me. And I know how she try She's with Denham Town and Denham Town High School students. She's strong. She really she, yeah, strong. Yeah, she's, she's strong, <laughs> don't it? She was strong long time. But, you know, she grew up in the same era, so she kind of understand the culture. Right. So bless up yourself, my sister Audrey Williams, principal of Denham Town High School, who not stopped trying with our school, and bless up the, the students of Denham Town High. And we need to see more schools like that in Champs because probably it will create a difference in how them look, you yeah, know. Definitely. How them and you do have some good runners there, you know, but I don't know what happened. We always try to enter, but we never make it through the gate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and that that not have nothing to do with the school. No. Because mm -mm, you know, no. say, a whole heap of high school find people who go out in them town and recruit them, go after them That's what school. I was just about yeah. to say. Then look for me now, which part me there, on the bridge, and then I'm told I graduate from. Ah, uh, me don't speak. <laughs> we don't speak. Gavel, tell them you are my darling. Yeah, Save ways up. I graduate from, I'm there on the bridge. Save ways up. 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 Come down there. Yeah. And I miss me call Gavel. And I say, Gavel, I, I can't talk to you now, mama. <laughs> <laughs> she an uh, executive down here, no, Mama. I guess here. What I'm going to tell you, I'm going to outside broadcast. I can't talk to you now. <laughs> but you're ready. <right. laughs> Cabell, bless up yourself yeah, and thank you up. very much. Bless All right. Up. Have All a right. nice so, day. You to my love. Yeah. So, um, right. So I went to Woolmers and I went to St. Jacob for Six Farm. Yeah. And if you notice, me green. That's um, right. Me go with, I mean, I. I 
hope that Wilmers does well and made the best team win. Agreed. Agreed. But me, I, me I carry Jago. Yeah, carry Jago. All right, yep. not no yep. wrong with that. Yeah, carry Jago. No I'm a school. Yes. I'm a school. <laughs> it's just all right. Remember when we leave from Wilmers and go Jago, you know, da, 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 da. and can I tell you how much I love that school? I was seen. There are some places where you're invisible. Yes. And that place I was seen. That's and right. And that means the world to, to me. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, Jago may I run Big up Jago. Big up. And big up Herbert Morrison. That's where I went to sixth form. So I, big up go. all the Western school. Let me not champs. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Same way, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank all you very much, Sophia. Yes, Have a up. wonderful you rest too. of the day. And continue doing what you're doing, yeah, right? Me too, mama. <laughs> All right. So you got a little bird's eye view into the bridge staff, the untangled team, what school them go, a little bit about them school, which school them are carry, uh, who for son go which school, and that why she are carry that school, and all these wonderful things. So that's us. That's us right here on the Bridge 99 FM. Thank you very much for being part of our conversation every time. And please remember that we untangle the trending at 11 o'clock most Thursdays. All being well, most Thursdays, right? No pressure on the day. So we ask you to be a part of our conversations all the time. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take a break and then we're going to talk to Dan. All right. Cool. So we have live online Dwayne Turner. Good morning, Dwayne. I'm doing Dane. Oh, Dane, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Dane, good yeah. morning, Dane. Yeah. Uh, yes. So so you're you're live. So welcome to the bridge 99 FM and welcome to Untangle on the Bridge. So okay. when you're most welcome. So we know that you're a taxi operator who operates in the corporate era. But tell us a little more about yourself, what community you're from, and how you grew up, and how long you've been um, operating a taxi. Um, I was born in Kingston, but raised in Central Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. And uh, district of Wominster. Wominster district. Came okay. back to Kingston. Came back to Kingston after high school. And... Um, did one mechanic. Okay. I started um top grade since around 2014. Okay. Which high school you yeah. went to? DB Kofi. Where's that? Saint Elizabeth. Oh, so you went to school in Saint Elizabeth. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. So you you know the, the 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 major reason why we're talking to you is because of that experience that you went through, and my producer got in touch with uh with you. And I agree with her that this should make a very interesting story. So first of all, before we even ask you to take us back to that day, it, it, was, it was what year? It was last year. Okay, August. last year. Okay, so before we take you to August last year, let me just say congrats on your bravery. Yes, so now take us back to that day in August last year. It was a, a night when I finished working and um, was supposed to go and pick up my son. Mm-hmm. But at the time now, when I turned on to Mullah and Joe, there's like something telling me to go back to Radio's Road. So, I pulled the voice and I went and I ended up back on Radio's Road. But while I was driving, I saw this lady and this is when I actually passed where the stop me, you know. And then... It's not worse, you can't really stop the car when after the pass on because they might make a sudden stop on a vehicle and end up running in the park. Yeah. So she said, sorry about that. So while driving, I said, you can see that she was down. So my after that, she good. She said to me that, yeah, man, she's all right. But she gave me a thousand and I gave her back her chain. When I reached at the office at Spring Plaza, I noticed, because I have a bright roof light, I noticed I hear something and when I look. She has some razor blade in her hand. Yeah. Yeah, but I can't notice the razor blade that they kind of cut up her finger then. Whoa. So she was in the back of the... Uh, obviously, she, she was in the back? No, she was in the she front. She in the front? Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah. So she started cut up herself while she was in the like car? She had the razor blade in, in, in her hand. In her, you know, while she in the razor, I can give her some minor type of cut. But okay. it's like, once you see that, it's like you already know her intention right away. Mm-mm. So at the same time, I showed her, so where are we with that? 
we still have just man and not our head. So we still have to be not let her off, you know. So at the same time now, at first she said that she was going downtown. Mm -hmm. So because of that now, we just start like drive, tell her something to bring her downtown and I tell her, look here, people have been through worse than what you're going through right now, trust me. So hold on a little bit, hold on a little bit there. So she admits say, uh, something she had got you and she had cut herself. She never admit at the time. But at the time, uh, you can't know her intention. Yeah. So yeah. while I was driving, you know, so my time, like, when I asked her a certain question, she would start to scream and bang her head on the seat oh, and, and all see. those things. I'm trying to, like, try to calm her down. Ooh. So at the time, I ended up driving her down, so I asked her if she wanted something to drink. She said no. I said she wanted something to eat. She said no. At the time I was driving, I was supposed to pick up my son and Walter. Mm -hmm. So when I end up going to pick up my son now, I end up plugging up one of the lights. Because she was saying that, it, at first I was saying that, that I was going to go to the police station and she was saying to me that once I go to this police station, she's a dead woman. Why she said that? Because she was just going to pick her wrist. Oh, oh, in other words, if you go to the police station, she'll kill herself. Yeah, she's going to do it. Oh, Lord of mercy. So, so, was this a young person? She seems to be in her 30s now. Okay. Fairly so young person. Yeah, at the same time, she was crying and telling me that everybody turned her them back on her and she don't have anywhere to leave, no money, nothing. So she was so, going through a depression. So what were your thoughts during that time? What were your, what you were thinking? I was thinking, you know, that if I let out this woman, probably then go and find her dead by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I know that they're not rest on me. Mm -hmm. So she banging her head and she making it clear that she has issues, yes. but she just not yes. telling you what they are. No, and I, and I noticed that when I asked her a certain question, mm -hmm. that's when she started to cry and, you know. Okay. So when okay. I not pick up my phone now, I not plug up one of the lights that police would pull me over. Because I never have another, another choice. Because she said if you carry a guy station, she'll kill, kill herself. So you now start thinking, no, you're going to find a different way to involve the police. Yes. What is not this? So what you do? So at, at the same time, when I drive out with my son now, my son was part of sleep on the back seat. Oh my goodness. And I remember part one police that did not stop me with one light, and then after that, I. He <laughs> said, just when you want the police, they'll stop you, they not stop you. Hello? Hello? Yes. Miss me, you say you, you turn off one light and the police still not stop you. No, and then when I reach at the four roads, right, where the shooting took place the other day. Yeah? But, yes. I you know, run the amber light with the one light just to catch the police attention and still didn't see me any mind. Hey! <laughs> what else you do? So, I know, and then I just turn back and say, you know what, maybe the police is on the boulevard because I live in Portmore. Oh, my goodness. So, while going down the boulevard now, I noticed I saw a blue light, but when I look, it was on the next side to the police station, and I said, gee. But at it, after when I saw the blue light on the next side, I told myself that I was going to drive to Gregory Park with the one light because I didn't know, you know, the more business around there, so you know, police are around there and pull over. Mm-hmm. But you put yourself in a serious risk, though, you know? You know, so to tell you that it's true, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling worried or anything like that. No, you were not feeling worried, and that's why you do it. And bless you for that. But it's as though the most I never... Him cover your man. You never feel no worry because you did do it. No, I wouldn't feel worried or anything like that. Wow. It's not really the first time I ended up encountering things like that, you know? As a taxi driver. As a taxi driver, yeah. So go on talk now. So you say you go on talk. Driving going down now, I notice that a lot of police people in front of me, so I feel good now. So I end up going in the lane that the police were at. And while going down now, I notice that they notice the one light and step out in the road. Mm -hmm. But while the police come up now and ask him for license and documents, I was like, he had my hand just for him to ask me to come out of the vehicle. Yeah. 
But it's like he just look on the light of face and then show me the device and say, you this and I said yes, and right, he just went out ahead and bring the ticket. Okay, so, so you couldn't just come out of the vehicle on your own? No, because the thing is, I don't want her to end up feeling I was going to the police. Yes, 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 you're always conscious of her in the car. Yeah, because when the police then come up to me now, I'm turn on the roof light, she turned yeah. down her hand to them, couldn't see any form of cut now, the razor blade. She was mm-hmm. hiding. Mm-mm. So that's when now I you know, take out the papers to the vehicle and come out the vehicle, so she was saying to me that. Where I go? You know, see the man them don't give it already. I'm the same time I said, <laughs> but she don't no, easy. But she don't easy, do he? Where you? Where she say where you go? Yeah, so me say to her, and I say, no, but I'm going to give them up. I'm going to heal them up. Wow. Oh so me step out of the vehicle. That's when I went to the police and the officer. Me a shit, man, and I'm wanting to do is just ask me to step from the vehicle. I wouldn't even notice. But at the same time, the police was saying that because me a try to avoid the ticket now, me a try to come up with something. Mm-hmm. But there was another police officer who heard what I was telling him. Mm-hmm. He you now came over to me and asked me what the matter and then him start now to explain to him. Mm-hmm. What you told him? I told him that the lady in the vehicle is trying to kill herself. Right. And he asked me what, what I mean. So I said, my son is on the back and I said, I pick her from Riddle Road and she have the razor blade trying to kill herself and she would allow to get like a little assist to get her out to get the blade out of her house. Mm-hmm. So that's when he called over the uh, inspector and then sent me across the road to the next one. Mm-hmm. So he said, I give the inspector the papers and he hold the papers and look on it like it's something pertaining to the traffic office. And we were talking and I opened him up with a plan, like, I tried to come up with something how to get her out of the vehicle. But at the time, they only had one female officer with them, that's Officer Campbell. Mm-hmm. So, I was talking to DSP Adams now from Ellison Road and follow over the next hour and so what we do, we just plan that them hold me now and like what we go over now, we have to like, hey boy, we don't hear to have the gun already, where the gun there? So, so, oh, where that come in? No, no, it's me and the police them come together with that, you know? Oh, oh, that was the plan on a device? Yeah. Okay, what is so, this? So, when so we she are here the whole of this? When we went over now, they must say, hey boy, pull the trunk now. We don't hear they are coming the road already. Oh my God. So at the same time, they see my son in the back because once them hear everything, what the police who asked me, what really happened, yeah. he went by my door now to say that he's securing my son. Your son was awake so, at this time? He, he, no, he was asleep at the time when it was happening. Okay, thank God. So, when I look, they pull the trunk and then they call over the female officer and the female officer asks her to stay from the beat because they're conducting a search. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really sure what happened after, but after that, then up to the female, the same hold one of our hands and yes, the Adams hold the next hand. Mm-hmm. Adams is the same, to, is the same Adams who did always depend on the traffic thing? Yes, the tall, thick brother. Oh no, okay, go on talk. When I look, she was screaming to them and the Adams was saying to her, let us help you, let the police help. And then talked to her, she screamed until she got one razor and then she screamed until she got in it. So by this time, the police never actually see the blood on the razor? No, because she turned over her hand. Boy. But, but I, already did, I did already told them that she had the razor in her hand still, you know. Yeah, but you remember saying, you know, them good a feel it. You remember say a police, you know, at the end of the day, them a look for a scam, you know. So them can't just accept what you are say right away, so. So yeah. when them see it for themselves, now them realize that this is a thing. Yeah, man, them see it. I want to tell you, say, even one of the police officers came to me and said, the first person ever experienced something like this. Oh, my God. So them see, so she cut herself. And so the female yeah. officer was Officer Campbell. Yeah. So Officer Campbell... Time. Got her, or got her to come out the, the, the car. Yeah, man. Talked to her and she, yeah, I was telling her, she told her that she, um, they were conducting a search. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh God. It was Officer Campbell and J.C. Adams who held her hand. Oh God, J.C. Adams and Officer Campbell. God bless them. Yeah, J.C. Adams. So how the, it was? It was a female officer who got her to 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 to, to drop the the, the razor. The bo- all, the, all the police themselves, and they surrender and was talking to us. Oh, God. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, even after that, man, um, 
end up give her a hug before I leave her and everything. And before I left, I even plugged back on the light and showed them that I, I had two lights. <laughs> so them never cancel the ticket? No, I have to pay for it. Yes, I for it. Oh, okay. Because you paid for the ticket already? Yeah, I paid some outstanding um, around two weeks ago. So I don't know how to one for the leave to pay for it. You know something though, Dane? You see the fact that you got a ticket and you actually pay for the ticket, it only going to make your act of kindness even more hearty, Carl. I tell you the truth. Don't, no, I didn't pay for the ticket. Yes, you did. 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 Yes, you Oh, because so you're going to pay for it? No, that's what I told her that I have four to go for it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that works out in your favor because, you know. Yeah. So, so, so you're saying, as a taxi, because of the time, you become, we get carried away with this conversation, you know. So you're saying that as a taxi operator, it's not the first this happened? No, it's not. All right. I'm not going to say that these people come in the vehicle and sometimes I just want somebody to talk to, you know. Yes. A lot of them people come here, them cry and all those things. Trust me. Yes, I believe you. And even since the incident took place, after that, like a person that we sit down in here and wait until everybody come out and then just want to talk. Mm-mm. Wow. And you know something, though, I'm just thinking of the danger that sometimes taxi operators go through. You hear it in the news all the time. And mm-hmm. sometimes you might be very, you know, resistant or, 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 or hesitant to, yeah. to, to, to talk because you just don't know if it's, just like the police don't know if it's a scam, you don't know if I want neither. Yeah, that's true. So what would you say to your colleagues out there who are facing danger daily, but who can still be, you know, a, 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 a good Samaritan? Yeah, you have to be very, very vigilant out here, you know, and um, the next thing is this, if a car do good, don't, just don't do anything. If, say that again, if you, if you are? If a car do any good, don't do anything. I see him, so you go. <laughs> I love that. So let me ask you this now, Dean. Did that lady ever take back your taxi again? Yeah, that's the next thing. I, um, one night I bring someone to Hagley Park, and I was supposed to come some woman's night, and then I go, I said, go back to Hagley Tree. And... At the same time, I was driving and say someone said, yes, they're going to price right. And then I said to her, I said, hurry up and come in before the police and come to me. So when she came in the vehicle, I'm only here, the person said to, her, said to me that, um, look what I tell Jeb a good night and Jeb and not that he won't answer me. So me now, I was saying, no, mama, I'm answer you, but you may pay attention to the police. Same time, when I look, I said, wait, I look familiar. And then she moved behind me and said, oh, are you? So I said, you know, Sarah, but after that, now she was telling me things. So how she looked this time? Look way better than the um, last time I saw her still, you know. Right, so she was in a better place this time? Yeah. So when she said thanks, she, what, what else she said to you? So I asked her, the first time she was really going to do it, you know, she said, the past is the past. I said, I know that it's the past, but I just wanted to know if she was really going to do it. And she said, yeah. That night she was a dead, wo- dead woman. The fact, they, you see, the fact that she actually starts slit for herself with that razor, because it you, you, you take it take it take guts if you take a razor and a slit yourself. So that's a desperate person. Yeah. And me just me no know. I mean, this is an act of bravery, and I'm just so happy that we got a chance to have this conversation with you. And for those who didn't hear, I'm sure there are many who heard, but for those mm-hmm. who didn't hear this story, at least they. They, they hear it now. And I'm really hoping that your act of bravery is recognized in whatever way. But even if it is not recognized by man, trust me, it okay, recognized. Oh, yes, Dan. Oh, yes. Is there anything else that you want to say that we have not asked any other, you know, I don't know. Anything else that you want to say? Oh, uh, uh, I want to say that the people are more bashing the police still. To be honest, they did, they did a, a, a good job. Yeah. 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 Right. They really helped me out. Yeah, man. It, it sounds that way. So to all the officers who, you said all of them gathered around her at one point. And, and yeah, they get around me at the uh, behalf of the police force. They'll come in me. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. 
you know and this is such a good story because we, we hear so much negative and we hear so much negative stories about the interactions between the public and the police we hear so much negative stories about even taxi operators that it, it, this is really Hello, you're good, you're good, you know. i'm uh, oh, you hearing me now Hello. yeah you're not hearing me look like we lost dean no no you're not hearing me dean Hello? Uh, yeah, you're not hearing me? You still yeah, not hearing hear me? No. Okay, fine. You know, I was just saying that with so many negative stories that we hear every day, this is just the kind of story that really makes us have more faith in ourselves as a people. And, yeah. you know, just congrats again on your bravery. I'm happy to know that it is a, it's a story that included the police and the bravery of a citizen and that the police actually saw that you were speaking the truth and rallied around you. That is, that's a wonderful story. Yeah, but all right. I remember another another one where um I don't know they're supposed to hear about it with the lady jump off down by waterfront downtown and a yes. passenger worker who dived in. Mm-hmm. Well, if at least have more people like that, um, it's a better place to live. Sometimes people just want somebody to talk to, you know. So so true. So true. And you know, you know, in the capacity that we are in, whatever capacity that is. It's good when we can even find just a little bit of time because, you know, the story said that you thought that that day in, a, in August last year, you were going to go home early that day there. Yeah, and I ended up having to drive around. Uh, uh, I think it was more than two hours with her. Oh, my goodness. Bless you. Just bless you. And again, thanks for sharing that story. And, um, wow, bless you. As I said again, I really hope the community or the police or, you know, relevant authorities acknowledge that story, acknowledge the good that you did. And it is an encouragement to all of us to just lend a helping hand because you just don't know, in your case, you're saving a life. Yeah. Thanks again, Dane, for talking with us and bless okay. you. Uh. Wow. What a story. What a story. So, um, <laughs> engineer, Miss Wood turned off that something there. I couldn't get up. The story I told riveting. I could not get up. So, that's the story that we were, you know, telling you about. And, you know, it, wow. Thank you, Lafayne. Lafayne says she saw the story and said that this is the kind of story that she'd like us to do on Untangle. And I'm so happy that you did because it's a kind of story that Jamaica needs to hear. And for those who are logged on, and listening to us and hearing all these horrific stories, you know, about what's happening here in Jamaica. At least this is another side of Jamaica and another side of Jamaicans. And if you suspect someone needs mental health support or if you're having mental health challenges yourself, you're being invited to contact the Ministry of Health's Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Helpline. And it's 888 639 Five four three three. That's eight eight eight. New life for mental health support. So we want to say a very special good afternoon to New York. Good afternoon, Beauregard. Good afternoon, Mama Kelly. How are you doing? I am doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to hear your voice once again. Same, same to you. <laughs> How's everything? Good. Very good. I That's mean, good to hear. You know, say you know, say it's champs is in the air, right? Yeah, man, and I hear say a whole heap of history is being made. Yes, you mean in terms <laughs> of records? Yes. Yes, yes. That's true. Yeah, man, yes. some some records will get made today. Um, congratulations to that young lady Alana Reed from Heidel um, on breaking Veronica Campbell's twenty-two year old record. Can you believe um, that? Yeah, man. That's that's amazing. Oh Truly amazing. Yes, and that young man from KC doing very well too. And crew me. That's the guy. Yeah, man, he might go on good. Yes, he but is. It, that's the first person under uh, at that age group to go under ten. To go up. Under uh, to come in under ten, under ten seconds in that hundred oh. meter. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so so that's history being made right there. I believe Bolt didn't do it. Blake or none of them never did it. Um, he's the first one at that age. Well, you know what I always wanted to worry about? If we keep breaking records, <laughs> <laughs> one fine day, one of them boys, they're going to take off and fly, you know. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 
Please. Yeah, but go on good, Mama Kelly. Big them up, definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, That's man. what yeah, Jamaica man. is all about, man. We breed champions, we breed sprinters, we breed yeah, runners. Man. We just breed great athletes overall and musicians. You know, it's a great, great feeling to be from Jamaica, our little island who has made such a huge impact on the world. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we, we, are, we are, as you say, amazing. And, you know, all eyes seem to be on the 100 meters. It's a thing with us, a sprint. You know, so everybody looking to see who going to break records in both boys and girls, in, in mm -hmm. all classes, actually. Everybody yes. looking to see who are the 100 meter champions, you know? Right, right. Yeah, well, every, among everything else, but the, a lot of eyes there. So, you know, Mr. Louis Grant has to be in Jamaica for this. Mr. Irwin Clear is also in Jamaica for this. Shout outs to both of them. Um, to, uh, I know Louis is going to be here. Yeah, you know, yeah, I thought yeah. about him, you know. <laughs> you know, but I thought about him because I know that him is Jago all the way. All yes. the way. Yeah, man. <laughs> Can I tell you something? If, if you're listening to Ms. Mr. Grant, you know, I mm. went to two schools. I went yes. to Woolmer's first to fifth farm, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping for the best. I want Wilmers to do the best them can do. And I went to St. Jago for six farm. And the fact that I have on green today tell you, say, mm -hmm. me a root for Jago, you know, Louis. <laughs> oh, you me a Jago, me thing there. That is what I hear now. Yeah, man. <laughs> But shout out to all the schools involved. Big up your school, Jago. Big up Mr. Louis Grand School, Jago. And to every other school involved, man. Um, you know, I, I am a George's person, so I have to go and wait for a little football thing to come around. Or whatever the case may be. Oh, dear. <laughs> Can I tell you something? We had a conversation this morning about champs. And trust me, we really had a good laugh. So all of the, you know, you know she, the team is with us. So mm -hmm. Kevin, the engineer, he might have on purple, the purplest purple me ever see. Mm -mm. So he might have on the purple, <laughs> he might have on the purple <laughs> today. God, he might have KC, old boy. Wow. Um, Sean, him, him sneaking, you know. A JC, old boy, but you're not sure if JC are going to make it, him just come neutral. If you see, if you didn't know for sure, that JC are going to make it, him blue for head to toe. Well, yeah. you know, so blue today, so, you know, so JC, he might work with him. Mm -hmm. And then, um, it me just tell you already, said JC, me a work with him. And we heard, we had some good laughs because um, have you ever heard of Morrison Memorial High School? Yes. Oh God, laugh! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grant, keep me up to date on a lot of things, uh, Mama Kelly. Yeah. So shout out to Mr. Louis Grant. As so, I said, this is his nice area. Nice man. You know. Yes. Nice man. So Lafayette went to that school, and we had quite a laugh because. You know, so Lafayette never know not about champs them the day when she go to the school that told my mm. girl come. But as I said, it's not where I didn't know about, you know, it's, it's who that school produced. So they produce a champion girl, big up yourself, Lafayette. So nice. that's that. And then Cavell now, we ask Cavell which school she had cheer for. She had cheer for Casey because her son mm. went to Casey, graduated from Casey. So she purple all the way. So I said to her, which school you went? She said, then I'm town and mama, my school never. Them don't know nothing about them. There's something. Them don't know nothing about them. There's something. They just know off again up and stone police station. Whoa. And she said, she said, <laughs> She said, no, I'll never tell you something, you know. When the way how she said it, you know, the list of them not tap they do love, you know, cover it up the list of them are crack up. <laughs> so that you know, we were just very frank today. Very frank nice, about where nice, we're coming nice. from and who we are and who we're supporting at champs. So that glad to nice. see that everybody's in good spirits, Mama Kelly. You know, shout out yeah, to man. the reggae girls, they've got World Cup coming up. Also to the Sunshine Girls, um, representing Jamaica as well. And also want to send a big shout out to Team Jamaica Bickle. They have a um, Labor of Love fundraising luncheon that's coming up on Sunday, April the 16th here in New York at the Crest Hollow Country Club. Um, that's in Woodbury, New York City. And of course, we know that the Team Jamaica Bickle is here to, you know, raise funds for support and funding for um, our athletes in Jamaica and wherever they may travel in the world. So big right. respect to Team Jamaica Bickle. Nice. Harrison mm -hmm. Memorial is the school. Morrison. Harrison Memorial. You there probably you know go. Morrison. Do you know Harrison? I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, Mama, we go from Chumps to Mr. Chump. Well, what, Trump. What? From Chumps from to Trumps. <laughs> from Chumps to Chump. <laughs> AKA Trump. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> what now? What there, now? There, what? There, there, there's still a delay on, on his case, Mama Kelly. All know them can't decide what they want to do with Donald Trump. Um, the, they have to reconvene again mm. um, to make some decisions on what they're going to do going forward with Donald mm. Trump. So, we, we, like you say, if any day them come up with a decision, Mama Kelly, I'm going to call me and sleep. I'm going to call him. <laughs> Trust me, Mr. Quotos don't make me sorry to be in our work house. You don't get that clear yet. I, I mean, I make for, you know, wow. you know what they say? Prison don't make for dog. Mm-mm. 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 I mean, I you. <laughs> mm. you so, know, um, so. it was, it was also unfortunate, Mama Kelly, that, um, there was a, another school shooting here in the United States, this time in Tennessee. And, um, that is where, you know, our guest is from. Um, that we're going to be speaking to right. and um you know six people were killed um three adults and three children and the shooter this time was a female mm-hmm. and um she was mm-hmm. killed um during the whole thing as well so um you know we say condolences to the families and who were affected once again you know it's sad that we have to yeah. keep on saying these things over and over but yes. there's been a number of school shooting since the year started and you know we're looking at that we keep our eyes on this situation because we don't know where a shooter gonna turn up next oh, you know it's sad and who so is the sad. shooter exactly you know exactly. as you talk about school there's a, a a video going around with a Ghanese teacher going it went viral if she went to school with fear cutlass cutlass hmm. she got school with you know because and she <laughs> insists a self-preservation a, 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 a self-defense self-defense yes uh, so she from, go and wow. miss, you see a picture with her and she look like she may I tell you she favor nanny she did it with her last like she me don't know but at the end of the day it's it's all a reflection on the kind of violence that they face in schools there wow so sad. it's not just here and it's not where you are is bad though boy god in terms of schools and it's bad because it's one thing for for fight teach and another thing for, for shoot 20 people you know mm-hmm. what i mean so yeah. it's very bad where you are. It's getting worse here, and apparently it's just a reflection on on relationships between you know adults yeah. and children. I don't know. And and also we must commend the police officers this time around um, for their quick response and how they dealt with this situation. We saw the last time there was a school shooting um, where the police um, stood outside and they didn't want to go inside or they responded late. And you know they got a whole lot of backlash from that from their actions in that last one. I believe it was in Uvalde, Texas. Um, that was the last one, and um, you know it, we, people are really commending these officers for going in quicker this time. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, as we talk about, we're going to be talking to Graham's wife and um, Morgan Heritage is releasing their star-studded album soon it's supposed to be out next month and apparently it has uh, a lot of the Afrobeat or artists who you know have you know do a lot of afro songs mm-hmm. and it it, it 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 tells us where we're going you remember last week we were talking about the new generation of artists African artists being influenced by dancehall mm-hmm so I had a conversation with Jerry, who is our musical director here at the bridge. We had a conversation earlier in the week because he always sends me some of these Afro speed songs. And I was saying like, you know, back in the day, Lucky Dubé and, and, and others like him were heavily influenced by, you know, original reggae music. But it seems as though this generation is influenced by dancehall and he agreed. And he was saying that although it may not sound as dancehall as we think, they have publicly acknowledged, and I can hear it, that that their influence is dancehall. But I hear it, Boriga. I hear it. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you know, our music has inspired so many people around the world, you know, and we give thanks for the inspiration as well, you know, because we must have gotten inspiration from somewhere whether right. it be the Almighty or whatever the case may be. But we give sure. thanks for the inspiration as well, and we are glad that we can motivate and inspire other people. Absolutely. And that's a great thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And when we even hear their music, mm-hmm. and even I remember the first time I saw Lucky Dube on stage, and he had three backup singers with him. <laughs> 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 
the way how them move, you know, man. Be sure so the eye trees and look for get two little move from them. Because them can't move. Remember, you know, Mama <laughs> Africa, that's... <laughs> I'm telling you. It is now 1.20, Mama Kelly. Um, we have mm. to take a commercial break. And then when we come back, we will speak to Dr. Annabelle Manalo Morgan. Right. right. I hope I said that correctly. It is Irie Jam Radio 93.5 FM. I am Beauregard. And we are connected to the Bridge 99 FM with the Queen Mother, Mama Elise Kelly. Mama Elise. Yeah, what a beautiful song. Yes. Definitely love it. You know, I did an album review of, of um, this EP, Four Grams, and truly an amazing album, an amazing work. Um, perfect segue. It is Women's History Month. And we have a very special guest on today, Mama Kelly. Her name is Dr. Annabelle Manalo Morgan. She is the wife of Gramps Morgan. Good afternoon and welcome, Dr. Annabelle. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, could you just tell us about yourself, a brief history of your background? Sure. So, as you mentioned, I'm Gramps Morgan's wife. Um, we have three kids together, but total we share 14. I'm a cell and developmental biologist. I'm actually in lab now in Nashville, Tennessee at Vanderbilt University. Um, work, my work is, you know, primarily in the heart space. So we look at single cells in the heart and have also studied a lot in the cancer space as well. Dr. Annabelle, you share an amazing story um, about your, your journey and it involves your son. Um, tell us about what happened with your son and how did you start your journey in CBD? Sure. Um, Macario is the first child that Gramps and I share together. He was born with a um, stroke and eventually was having 200 to 500 seizures per day. Wow. So it was at that time he turned five weeks old and the seizures just wouldn't stop. So the doctors decided to remove 38% of his brain. So he is missing all of his left brain, pretty much. Um, when Macario turned six months old, I formulated him a medicine, and I utilized the cannabinoid CBD, which of course comes from marijuana or ganja, um, and I chose that because he was just not developing at all, and I was really, you know, as a mother, desperate to find something for him. Um, needless to say, it, it, it worked pretty well. In two days, he started showing results. He started moving his eyes around. In just a few months, he was crawling, started walking by 14 months old. And today, he's seven here in Nashville, Tennessee, and he has no developmental deficits. He's a perfectly normal seven-year-old. But we got, can, can, can Dr. Annabelle hear me? Yes. Oh great. oh, great. Okay, good. Um, my question to you is, um, what led you to, to, to use the CBD? Is it oils, right? Yes, I formulated an oil. So um, what led me, honestly, was the research. When I was researching really what's called neuroplasticity and how the brain can rewire, I wasn't really looking specifically at cannabis or plant compounds. I was just looking at the research and looking at different molecules that have been studied. And there wasn't a lot of research on what's called cannabidiol, which is what we call CBD. But I just saw the potential of something that was safe and something that could really help his brain just kick into action. Um, so it wasn't one of those things where, hey, I'll try ganja or, hey, I'll try... No, I was just really reading through research and, and like I said, desperate to find something else, an, an alternative. That, oh, portion, that, portion, that portion that portion of his brain that was removed, was removed what functions were that portion responsible for? Yeah, so he's missing all occipital lobe and temporal lobe, and they are responsible for organization, processing. He is not supposed to have any vision on the right side. He's not supposed to have any movement on the right side. Um, it's also responsible for memory. So he is definitely doing all of these things that he is not supposed to do. So, so let me ask you, wow, this is amazing. So how did you, Eva, if you did this research on your own, how did you know what quantity to apply and or how to apply 
So it is all research, and a lot of research starts with reading. Um, you know, we don't just go into the lab and start mixing different chemicals. You're reading, and you're you're grabbing clues based on little bits of research that others have done. So it was focused to make sure there was not toxicity levels, which is your safety research. I was then focused on the amounts that I could use based on his weight and size um, to ensure that it would be safe and to ensure that I could see some action. So it was really just honestly a guess. And as long as I was doing something safe, I was willing to take that risk. My goodness. And you said you saw you saw an improvement or at least a change in two days. Yes. Yeah. So for six months, he was no different than a newborn. So he wasn't really doing anything. He wouldn't even look around. So move his arms or anything. So the first change I saw, uh, Gramps and I saw, was he started just moving his eyes around and moving his body around and being very active. And then after that, it was it was like he was playing catch up in life. You know, slowly we were we were not expecting him to utilize that right side. And, and that right side initially was not his favorite side, mm. but eventually he just started using it like the other side. Um, he's still missing 40% of his brain. We have done an MRI recently, and um, you know his teacher just sent me a video of him reading today, and he plays basketball, and recently ran a marathon. He is a perfectly normal seven-year-old boy. You guys will see him soon. What was that first six months like? Um, I know first you are a mother, you're also a doctor, but what was that first six months like um, when you first discovered these problems? It was devastating. Um, it's really difficult to not have any control and to be completely helpless when you see your child is suffering. Mm. At the same time, we have other children that we had to you know, keep up lifted and um, give time to and energy, right? So you had to still find some normalcy. And, and I was just always questioning, is this our new normal? You know, am I going to have a kid that can never play? Am I going to have to quit my job? I mean, Gramps actually took a lot of time off just to be at home because I had to work. My, my job had to continue. So, you know, just a lot of questioning, a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. And, you know, we kept our faith. And, and right at that six months time, I realized why God wanted me to be a scientist. Yes. You, you know, you know what is so obvious just listening to you, you never accepted what you were told. Mm -hmm. You could not accept that. And, and, and uh, that's a lot of faith. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all faith, right? And, and I guess I'm, I'd like to say I'm competitive. So, you know, I think where Gramps and I get along so well is when he's like, oh, no, I have to do this and go there and we have to find a way, you know, I'm, I try to be that calm piece for him, that there, there is a way. There's always a way. We're going to find a way. Um, God's going to give us a way. And when you have that mindset, you can, you can get through more than you can imagine. This is God's path. This isn't, this isn't ours. You know, Dr. It started when his grandfather was alive, right? Yes, he was right there with us. Um, Papa Denroy is, was instrumental in really pushing me and championing me. And uh, man, I feel his spirit today. He, he's, right. always, he's always just covered us while we were going through this. Yes. You know, your story is truly amazing, Dr. Annabelle, and I'm pleased to, you know, have you on today to speak to you. Um, the question is, what, were, what are the naysayers saying today in the medical field, seeing that the CBD actually worked? Are they saying that it's not the CBD, it's something else? Yeah, a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, you know, luckily I haven't had too much negative um backslash because I mean look at my son right and and I am really a scientist credible and just am a mom first and took that chance now you know when you sit down with different governments and different academics you do need to su supplement what I saw in my son with data and that's you know cellular biology that's biology in mice because in order for us to know 
how exactly it worked and in order for it to work for others we have to do the traditional science so that's the fight um you know it hasn't been a negative fight it's just really been a push to enable us to get funding to do the science and enable us to really speak without there being this stigma you know about it being marijuana or weed you know that's the fight is just to be able to educate people and once they're educated you just see them lighten up a little bit and and so I, I truly feel like I'm in a perfect place and and I've I've almost been chosen to be able to lead this journey of getting cannabis legalized and getting more research done on cannabis so we could see more stories like our sons and would you I'm say this go ahead. Go, go, ahead. Ahead, go ahead mama no I'm happy to hear you talk about the science behind it because in as much as this is a success story, we still are going to need to convince people through the science. Uh, is, is, is your son still on, on the cannabis oil? And that's one. And two, have you done enough research or has the medical fraternity done enough research to be moving towards finding out the dosages? Because sometimes that's where the issues lie. Yeah, great questions. He is definitely still utilizing CBD on a daily basis. Um, you know, with him, it's just all about brain health. So he's very hydrated all the time. We try to feed him correctly. Um, and we think of cannabis and the compounds that come from cannabis as supplements to our body. Kind of like when you're dehydrated from water, you take water. This is very natural to us. So we need it to supplement our engines so that those wheels can keep turning. And, you know, to answer your second question, that research is ongoing. Uh, a lot of the reason why I travel so much and I try to collaborate and interact with scientists overseas is because I really don't want to wait on the United States to decide to fund all of our research um, because of the red tape and because it's still Schedule 1. So I'll travel to get studies done in different parts of the world, wherever you know God allows those studies to be done. And, and it's going to take a little bit of time, but I think we have a stronger grip on understanding doses. I have yet to see any toxicity, whether it be in the cells or in the mice, of pure compounds. And so it's important to note that because a lot of times in just, you know, a sample of flour or even in a sample of oil that has a lot of different compounds in it, which are just extracts of the plant, we can't really scientifically gauge that. So we need those pure compounds. We need to study them one by one and then together to understand those true doses and those true drug interactions. Wow. Dr. Nice. Dr. Morgan, it's great to see that you are an advocate for the legalization of uh, marijuana for medicinal usage. Um, also, you know, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine, or well, I've had the conversation with a couple of friends of mine, and the question is, does the body need a regular dosage of CBD or marijuana? Yeah, that's a good question. So to answer your question, we do need a regular dosage of CBD. Do we need a regular dosage of marijuana? No, we don't. Unfortunately, we don't. But the truth is, is that CBD Man. doesn't only come from cannabis, okay. right? And all these compounds that are in cannabis, there's only over 150, in some instances, over 500. All of these compounds come from many other plants. Okay. So really when you say eat your vegetables, some of those compounds come in that way. Eat your fruits, some of those compounds come in that way. So really, you know, eating is such an important part in what we give ourselves, how we drink, how we hydrate. But to be exact, we don't need it directly from marijuana. Right. I really see cannabis as a medicine. And I want to see us exploit the abundance of being able to use these separate compounds to have safe non-toxic medications. No, I, I know that we could have you here for the whole day. I mean, <laughs> because there's so many things that we'd want to know. But you know, back in the day, old time people used to say they use herbs, meaning marijuana. And it's just interesting how that terminology has been changed to I smoke herb because it was the usage of the medicinal properties that first mm -hmm. made herb uh, marijuana so relevant 
have you found in your research, Dr. Annabelle, that it actually helps with other things? Sorry, that it actually what with other things? That it actually helps with other, you, you, you study particularly how to, it can help your son, but in your research, did you come across other uh -huh. diseases or, or, or issues oh, yeah, yeah. that it helps? Oh yeah, uh, you know, the first time I tried his formulation, because I wasn't going to give it to him without trying it myself. Um, there was just a level of focus that I was able to endure and um, I just slept great for a few days. And I just felt confident in giving it to others and found that it was healing people of acid reflux, Parkinson's disease, helping kids with autism, taking people completely off anxiety, depression medications, helping people with pain, um, you name it. And I've seen it, not just from the formula, which is called Masaya, which means happy in Filipino. I am Filipino. Um, but not just with that formula, but with other parts of the herb as well. And also it's important to note in different ways that you take it, you're going to see different results, right? So as you mentioned in the olden days, it was actually not smoked in, as, as a way to be utilized as a medicine. It was boiled as tea. And of course in Jamaica and the Caribbean, you know that. I mean, you drink tea for everything, right? <laughs> so. Um, I, I've seen this plant be able to help almost every disease and or condition from diabetes to cancer and it's about doing the science because really the properties in this plant are natural to us and when we take something that is natural to us in a potent manner, potent enough manner to actually do something, um, especially when you're sick, what it does is it just drives the body into what's called homeostasis or balance. The body has a defense mechanism. The body wants to heal, right? The brain wants to rewire. We have inner stem cells that want to go in and reduce inflammation. And, and really we can heal ourselves if we're given the right supplementation, if our signaling is efficient. And so that's the goal with cannabis as a medicine and really with any natural plant compounds as a medicine is to utilize it to really fuel our engine, utilize it at its root, instead of just putting band-aids on top of everything as the problem gets worse and worse. Absolutely. Great. Dr. What about Forbes? your book? Your book, last question. <laughs> Go ahead. I have the book right here, Mama Kelly. Look. Yes, Where show me. Let me, uh, let me see it. Let me see it before we got, there you go. <laughs> The Mighty Flower, How Cannabis Saved My Son. How was the launch of the book? It was incredible. It was, it was um, incredibly humbling. It was at Forbes in New York. Um, it was just humbling to see the power of family coming behind me and really having been a part of giving me the courage and giving, giving me the faith to not only save my son's life, but now tell his story. And the book is meant to be a foundation of that story, to educate those that don't believe in cannabis, to educate those that want to know more, and to really provide hope. Because in these times, I heard you talk about what happened here in Nashville. That school is within a mile of both of our children's schools. Um, so we got the call way before the news did. And, you know, it's just a really hard time here now in the city and we're all trying to come together and we're all trying to support each other. And my son's story, you know, is just a story of hope and a story of faith. And I just feel like we need more positive news. So thank you for allowing me to talk about Mighty Flower on your show today. And thank you for re reading it. Hopefully you're reading it and not just holding it. Yes, but, I'm um, getting there. I'm getting there, doctor. I'm getting Hopefully there. he will share it with his <laughs> colleague. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> you a copy as well i have to sign you sign you a copy thank you very much you know you know you said you were chosen and it, it just it, you, you said it so well because how many people have the access to information and research opportunities and and that you do so bless you bless you thank you so much thank you so much I'm, i just want to be a vessel and i believe we all are and luckily for me, I've, I've found what that means. And so again, thank you for having me. Um, as you can see, I'm in the lab right now. So I'm going to get back to that. But 
Thank you for having me so much. God bless you all. And I'm going to come talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you Wonderful. for being here, Dr. Morgan. Um, uh, once again, again happy Women's, Women's History Month. Um, you are a vessel, you are a blessing, and we appreciate everything that you do and continue to do the great work that you do. Um, but before you go, I would love to play one song for you. Can I do that? Yes, please. We got this text a while ago, so let me just read it until Beauregard comes forward. And it's from one of our listeners, and he says, Oh, wow, that's a strong woman, an absolute genius, not only in medicine, but overall. Her mindset and positivity is beyond amazing. Her brilliance should be recognized globally. Chosen indeed. Oh, thank you very much, Paul, for that. And thank you so very much for listening. I agree 100%. And of course, the grace with which she does it is also very admirable. So thank you very much for sharing that. I want to say a very special good afternoon to my sister, Sandra, who is sending me pictures of myself and Beauregard in that one, and then pictures of myself and, 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 and Lafayne in that one. Thank you very much for the pictures, sis, and for keeping us updated. And then this one says, Mama heading to the shop now. Hope you don't play, <laughs> play the song until I reach there. <laughs> Beauregard, you, <laughs> you there? Yes, Mama. <laughs> oh, me and my Jamaican peeps. <laughs> <laughs> It's with song never say must play till them reach. One Tony Curtis, one bad Tony Curtis, but <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So we got we got a we got a message um on about Dr. Annabelle, one of our listeners saying that she's an absolute genius, not only yes. in medicine but overall. And her mindset and positivity is beyond amazing. Her brilliance should be recognized globally. And she's chosen indeed, and that's actually coming from the drummer, former drummer of Toots and the Matals, Paul Douglas. Thank you so very much for listening to us. No, but I, I truly want to commend her, Mama Kelly, because when you look at the decisions that she had to make, you know, um, with, with all these medical greats around her, or, you know, these academics who were giving her uh, advice in terms of what direction to go and all the drugs that they had the child on and for her to you know just one day get up and you know cut cold turkey and say i'm going to try this and you, you know, know something on her own God, child you know these are her own colleagues telling her this mm -hmm. so it's not like somebody who far removed and thinking boy them 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 you know them just want them just not business these are her colleagues telling right. her this and she still went against it and mm -hmm. she tried it on herself first. Yes. Just an amazing human being. And, and, and as I said, you know, with so much grace. Yeah, man. Bigger up women's history once again. Yep. Mighty Flower. Um, I haven't gotten to reading the, the, the book as yet, Mama Kelly. Um, here's her son, her and her son on the cover of the book. Put it further, let me see. You know, so me, I look for see if you're in favor of grams. You come up a little more, yes, man. <laughs> nice, very nice, nice. And you know, wow, yeah, man. Your song that you played makes sense to you, you know, because it is so important for us to educate ourselves and encourage each other mm -hmm. to educate ourselves. That meaning just information that's what I'm talking about information because it wasn't her education that saved this you know it was her research her own personal craving for knowledge that she didn't get in the regular curriculum right so we have to step out of the box sometimes Virgin. and then you know they having a good a good support system you know um having how many more kids four other children i think she you said know. three she has three okay and for her, you know, everything, being a mother and, you know, focusing on her son, going, Macaria, going through all of these things and, you know, doing the research. I know that it was time consuming, you know, had to have taken up a lot of her time, you know, but it was all in, you know, that's, that's what a mother does, man. When, 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 when people back against the wall, Mama Kelly, them shoulder get broader. 
And I saw it go. That's true. You, you know? know something, yeah, Glory God. We have to also acknowledge the mothers who perhaps have found themselves in situations. Oh, is this really too high? No. Oh, Lord. Engineer ready. Yes. Who have found themselves in situations like this, but just don't have the resources, one. Or them just in a space where their them hands ties back at them, so we have to reach out to those mothers too, and 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 appeal to them to not feel powerless, you know, because you can feel powerless, especially when you hear someone like this. You can feel as though you're either not doing enough or you feel powerless. But but to 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 reach out to them to not feel that way but just do the best that you can do under the circumstances that you have and another important um story to be learned in this whole thing you know mama kelly is the fact that pay attention to the newborn babies you know um you know they didn't know it was a seizure that the baby was having over 200 seizures a day you know um the baby was just shaking and you know they might have not known sometimes you have to pay attention it might look like a little you know a baby movement but it's something else might be going on you know be beneath the surface so it was good that they they noticed it right away and you know paid attention to it and found out that it those seizures that were taking place absolutely absolutely very good point you know again you know i, I, I tell you something you know about regard the earth the world in a level you know because sometimes, you know, we just have to pray for those who are in spaces, either mentally or physically, where they wish they could do that, but they just can't. Either mental issues, emotional issues. We have to thank people like Dr. Annabelle for doing it for those who can't. Sure indeed. Sure indeed. Well, Mama Kelly, it looks like we have about 30 seconds to go. Um, you know what's going to be like? <laughs> 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 yeah, man, it was a great conversation as usual. Uh, Mama Kelly, you have a wonderful weekend. Jamaica, enjoy yourselves and everybody be safe. Thank you very much, Beauregard, and New York Heart of Love. Take care. So, it is that time in the afternoon. It is now a minute to one o'clock. I'm telling you, time certainly flies when you're having a wonderful conversation. So, that was a really wonderful conversation a while ago with Dr. Annabelle Manola Morgan. And she is the author of the best of the book, Mighty Flower, How Cannabis Saved My Son. And she is also the wife of Gramps Morgan. Wonderful connection uh, with Beauregard. So we invite you to join us next week, Thursday at 12 noon. And we will connect again to the Tri-State and also with Irie Jam Radio. And we will connect globally with Beauregard. So, no commercials. That's it. Okay, break. Then time signal. I got it. So we have live online the president of the Kingston College Old Boys Association, Mr. Richard Lindsay. And we're going to be having a conversation with the gentleman about the Retro Vibes Champs Party. So we want to say a very special good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Lindsay. Are you there? I'm hearing oh, yeah. you in a you, you uh, you're very low. I don't know if you want to uh, hold on. Let me turn on. Please. Somebody is calling me at the same time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you're much better now, right? Uh, yes, I am. All right. All right. Good afternoon, Mama Elise, and good afternoon to your listeners. Um, it's a privilege to be on the radio now, talking to Radio Royalty. I feel so blessed. Oh my goodness, I see you now. You're KC Ty, why you're feeling blessed too? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. Yes. All right. It's wonderful having you. So, so just tell us a little bit about um, the the Kingston College Old Boys Association. What what is there about Kingston College Old Boys that you think we need to know? Oh, plenty of things. But um, but what I want to share now, what I will share now, is that what a lot of people may not know, and that Kingston College was founded on the premise that the Bishop Gibson saw the need, I mean, at the time in 1925 when KC was founded, poor black boys only had elementary education. So yes. after elementary, which is primary school, you had no school to go after that. Yes. So what Bishop Gibson did was found a school, a high school specifically 
to house these poor black boys. Yes. And that is the spirit of KC. You know, you, uh, K, um, uh, goose pimples, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not a KC. So, I mean, I went to Woolmer, see with me. Right, okay? right, right. But there's a spirit that KC has that is so admirable. And most of the time you talk to old boys or just active, you know, old boys or, or students themselves, they tell this story. And right. It is so important for you to tell this story because it, 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 it makes you winning sit a little easier. <laughs> sit a little easier with us. <laughs> no, it's something that it, it resonated amongst every KC boy. Yes. We, that is something that we, a tradition that we ensure that is passed on to every person who comes to KC, understand why KC was built. Yes. And understand our purpose in this country, in this nation, and even in this world. Yes, there's a, there's, there's a spirit that you have that is almost fierce. And it is. I, it, I, there, uh, trust me, you know, I mean, a competitive spirit and, and even when you, you, you don't win, a spirit of, of perseverance and... The brave may fall but never yield. Yes, I, I hear that quotation in my ears too often. Yeah, man. <laughs> but it, it means something else too, you know, Ellis. What? And what it means, that story that I just, that story that I just shared, what it also means is that it sets us to lead. It sets us up to, to go forth and do things yes. and lead. That's what it really sets us up to do it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And pretty much let me just segue into Retro Vibes and Party. So the three objectives of so first, Retro Vibes and Party will be held this Friday, which is tomorrow at the Police Officers Club. It's 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. and it have three of the baddest retro selector. Yeah, let near them, near them. I'll try them work fine. I'll try them work fine. Near them, the bridge. bridge, the bridge. Near them. Is Rory from Stone Love, the yes. legendary Rory. Yes. Lano from Renaissance and yes. Kurt Riley, the party animal. I mean, it's going to be the biggest retro party this year in the country. Uh, Mr. Um, Lindsay, you segued from talking about KC to this, and I don't want our listeners to get it twisted. This really is not a KC moment. Exactly. That is why I'm saying, no, it was, we, we, we were set up a particular way to lead because there was three main, of, this is straight charity. This event, all proceeds will be shared amongst the schools that are involved. Nine schools are involved. Kingston College, Jamaica mm -hmm. College, Calabar, your school, Woolmore's Boys, Woolmore's Girls, St. George's, the Queens, Immaculate, and St. Hughes. Nine alumni are involved in this in this retro vibes party. All so how the did they come to be in, involved? And, and because and <laughs> good question. Because it, 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 okay, so retro vibes is coming off a thing that was started in 2014 to quell violence in champs. At the oh. time, it was KC Calabar JC it was called Three the Hard Way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you remember back in about 2014 or 15 when the violence started up because of champs and Casey Calabar yes. and JC. Yes. So what had happened was the old the, the, the past student association in that period decided to say, hey, we got to show these guys that this is friendly rivalry. We are still one at the end of the day. Right. So what they did, they started a party called Tree the Hard Way. And then they also invited other schools that in the second or third year and started to call it Three the Hard Way and Friends. So that was the main purpose of Three the Hard Way to call the violence. Now, because of COVID and everything, it kind of died down. So after, when I came in as president last year, I decided to say, hey, this was a good initiative. So why not restart it, but do it in a bigger way? So there was three main objectives that led me to do this. One, I just explained about the violence and showing unity and friendly rivalry. Yeah. The second thing, of course, is money. Um, a lot of people is not aware that most of the extracurricular activities that a high school um, performs in is the past student association who funds it. Mm -hmm. The uh, track team, the magnitude of Kingston College, and I, I'm, it's the same with Calabar, the same with JC, those schools that are generally highly competitive champs. Right. The, the lunch cost for a track team runs yes. into like half a million dollars a week. A week? A week. <laughs> It's one hundred twenty eight persons on a team, you know, roughly. Well, that you know. is, that's it, yes, yes. And and these boys <laughs> eat well. You got to. No, then if you want to perform, you have to feed them properly. True. 
So that is just a launch bill. We're not talking about the, the gear. We're not talking about the sneakers. We're not talking about the supplements. We're not, and this is just one team. Yes. So we're not talking about that. those who need assistance generally. Separately. There you go. So, so, so that is it. So this is why so money is not an important factor um, behind this virtual vibe so that the schools can get some funds because we have to do continuous Fund, fundraisers during the academic year to fund all these things that is going on. It's a right. never-ending, it's a never-ending affair. <laughs> so the so, second reason is, is fun. Sorry, go ahead. No, the second reason is is, is, is funding. Right. Okay, is there a so third the, reason? Yes, there is a third and final reason. Let's third start. and final reason is the, there's a thing called the Jamaica Alumni Association. Uh, I don't know if you're aware that it exists. But you can imagine, I mean, you have an association and are working actively in this nation, how powerful it would be. Everybody, who, who, everybody basically goes to a high school. So if you had a united alumni association working actively, it would definitely improve the nation. It would definitely improve the education system if they are Absolutely. moving on the right page and doing the right thing. Yeah. So that was part of my idea, um, my team's idea in executing this. My executive part of the idea was to say, hey, listen, let's, let's get this thing. It, is, it exists, and it needs to just be more active and more present. Yeah. But this was a part of the way to kind of lead the way to, show, to, to say, hey, let's get together, start to do stuff together, and make things that we do bigger and better so everybody can benefit. When you say everybody can benefit, you just named nine schools, right, who right. are actively involved. Are right. they the only schools that are going to benefit? Well, for this version, because this is a template that I'm executing, so I'm mm -hmm. just executing a template to see how it works. Mm -hmm. Definitely next year it will be bigger because as I said, there was a JAA, Jamaica Amla Association, and I was in their meeting and people were asking me, how did I come up with those nine schools? Right. And I say, hey, listen, I really don't, I didn't have a criteria. I just drew for the person who I know, the champs who perform, and, and I did it with them. But the truth is, I really want to expand it to include everybody. Exactly. Or as much as I can be. Exactly. And this is a wonderful way to, to use your leadership skills. Absolutely. Because it has been working in your neck of the woods. So we would add, this is a wonderful point for you to start to share what you know. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the whole thing. Um, yeah. Where I ventured off and said, you know, Casey was basically set up in a way to kind of lead, you know, because we were there, there was nobody poor going to school. Casey was the first school, and what evolved after Casey was tremendous. Yes. So, so for those schools who are listening here now and want to be a part of it or want to at least to support it, how can they? They can get in contact with the Kingston College Old Boys Association and they can get us through the listed number for the school. So, Mr. Lindsay, you really think it is a practical for, let us say, a JC boy to get in touch with the president of the Kingston College Old Boys Association for help to talk to Listen. him? Oh, come on. Ellie, come on. If I went to KC, where I grew up as a teenager, most of my friends were Calabar and JC people. Okay. I used to go on that campus and get good treatment. <laughs> and get real yeah. good treatment. So there is, I mean, people may say that rivalry at the front. Yeah. But underneath it, the whole different ball game because most of the most of us boys grew up in communities where we're mixed. That's so true. I'm so happy to hear you say that. You know? That is a fact, you know? Yes, yes. I'm happy to hear you say that. Is there anything else? Oh, yes, we have a lot more. Do you tell me when it is and how much we're right. going? And There you go. So it's, uh, it's going to be tomorrow night at the Police Officers Club. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, with it's 2,500 pre-sold and it's 3,000 on the gate. You still can get your tickets online at carptix.com or you can get tickets from any one of the alums that are participating, the executive of any one of these alums that are participating. Okay, so it's like it's an After Champs vibes. You're right. Friday evening After Champs this is where all the persons in the diaspora who fly down every year to come to Champs religiously will be tomorrow night. 
You know, we were having some conversations about champs today on the program, and it, 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 it just strikes me as such a wonderful experience because it's a long time we have got champs from Wapikil Philo. Absolutely. And, and our grandchildren are still excited about champs today. The, the, the enthusiasm has not waned a bit. No, it has increased. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? You know, but you know, see what it is now, uh, Champs. Champs is the whole state of feeling like your base. Champs is so loud in the grandstand now. I know, I, 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 you know, I live in the bush and I usually come to town a lot of times on Friday. I'm not coming this Friday because we can't take it traffic. No tickets either. You wouldn't get no tickets either. No, no, you know, I know, I, I, I passed that stage, but trust oh, me when I tell you. Sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You're sorry. No, 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 older than that. Older than that. <laughs> There's a distinct difference here, Mr. Lindsay, but you know what, okay. seriously, it is just so heartening to know that we're still breaking records, we're getting faster and faster, we, we, we're still enthusiastic about track and field, it's wonderful. So, so, and Kume Boaji went God. under 10 yesterday a mm -hmm. chance on the mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. so you know what the kc per people are saying the so gc people Bible, no the kingston college person so it was 9.99 oh. yeah. so what we say yesterday was a nine night <laughs> you know most get a little chance to plug in that he you would have must use the opportunity for yeah. plug but he's doing very well and and yeah, and we, without a doubt and look here that's you know you know i thought about it and i thought me not in a nut with mr lindsay a promoter at this bridge but watch this now. <laughs> but let me tell you what made me uh lighten up or relax the fact is that if he continues to do this well he's going to be making all of us proud absolutely absolutely we're, and we are proud of that that young lady from heidel who also that's right that's that's it was, right no I, it was mag, it was a magnificent experience to sit in the national stadium and and watch that live it was just a magnificent thing be there All right. and see. wonderful so thanks for you know whetting the appetites of those who are considering where to go after champs because absolutely. that you know is going to be quite a a, 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 a the, spectacle the wickedest thing yes. wickedest such a party man look at the yeah. line of wickedest all right. Thanks again for sharing all of that with us. Nice talking to you. Nice. Thank you very much. And all to all you, your listeners, take care and God bless. Okay. Thanks again. All right. Bye. Wonderful. So that's the president of the Kingston College Old Boys Association, Mr. Richard Lindsay, with a lovely conversation. And we're talking about the Retro Vibes Champs Party, but we're just talking about the whole Champs thing. And it's, oh, it's so much in the air right now. And this Retro Vibes Party is an inter-school event. It's going to be held tomorrow, Friday. And um, it's at the Police Officers Club. And it's really being promoted as an after Champs kind of vibes. And and uh, we have a time signal coming up now. <laughs> All right, so that's that. <laughs>